I apologize for the wind noise. I just wanted to give my first impression on this Sun Gold 560 watt bifacial panel now that it's been just over a week that I've had it in place. And the first thing I noticed that was kind of surprising was how sensitive they are. This actually starts generating electricity before the sun even hits it. As soon as it gets light out, before the sun's even up over the mountains, I start getting clicks on my generator showing that it's warming up. Peak output that I've achieved so far is just over 500 watts. The other thing that I noticed was when I first plugged it in, it was a lower wattage as far as output. And then every day it climbed up a little bit. So it was still going up until we hit a couple of cloudy and windy days. So it's not generating quite as much. However, it's still doing real well, even with the cloud. So overall, I'm very pleased with the output that it's giving me so far. And I've also tested cleaning, different cleaning methods. And I found the best one is to just shoot it with some water and call it good. Trying to brush it off with like a car duster or something like that actually makes the output far worse. As soon as I get the rest of them installed, I'll have a much better idea of exactly where we're at. I'm going to have a big long row of them right behind me here. And then one more is going to go right here. So I'll have one, two, three stepping down this way. And then I'll be able to compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges at that point. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe. And I'll have that all hopefully within the next month. So this is why I'm putting all my panels across the back here. You can see how the sun is up on that portion of the roof right there and shade over here. That's the way it is all winter long. I looked at a lot of different configurations and this was the only way putting them end to end across this whole length that they would be in the sun all day long other than putting them up on the main roof. The neighbor was asking me, well, why don't you just put them up on your main roof? And there's a couple reasons for that. Number one is there's no sense putting panels that are rated for 25 years on top of a roof that's of questionable durability. We had it recoded about five years ago, but if there's a leak or something like that, I don't want to have a whole bunch of panels in the way of fixing it. And then the other thing is having to lift all of that material and these panels up there, I don't have a clue as to how I would do them myself, get all of that material up there to begin with. And then the other issue is cleaning them. Solar panels need occasional maintenance. And what I see a lot down here when I'm out walking the dogs is super dirty panels sitting up on top of a roof because it's just too difficult to get up there and clean them. When I'm done with this building this rack and having them installed, I'll be able to get at every single panel and look at every single panel, clean them with just a step ladder instead of having to break out my extension ladder and climb up on a roof or do something treacherous like that. That's why I'm doing it the way that I'm doing it. I'm just about ready to get started installing the first couple of panels up on the roof. I should have an idea pretty soon exactly what each two panel series output is going to be. So if you want to see that, make sure you subscribe. So my first impression on these Pecron so far is nothing but positive. They do take a few seconds to warm up and get everything connected but they've done everything that I expected them to. I don't have any solar input hooked up to them yet, and I'm gonna do a longer video once I have that accomplished. It's taken a minute to hook up the two additional batteries, but in just a few seconds, you'll see these turn green. I've run all of my power tools off here, my chop saw, saws all, drills. If you want to see this thing go through all of its paces and max itself out, there's a guy on YouTube called Professor Hobotech and he shows everything that there is on this unit and he tests every input and every output as to what it can actually handle. It was very informative 
if you're thinking about buying one of these. This button here tells you everything about the batteries. If you click each one, it gives you each individual battery. You can completely control all of the input and output settings on everything. You can adjust your system as far as even the beeps on the touchscreen mode, the screen brightness, all of that kind of stuff. It will give you a record of all of the problems that it's ever had. On simple mode here, it just gives you a basic readout of everything. This is telling me that it's at 100% charge. The time of the day, obviously, output is one watt. It's probably just this new cord and that I have zero input. Pretty soon we're going to have some real world input testing. I'm going to do a more in-depth video at a later time once I play around with this a little bit more and I have some solar hooked up. In the meantime, if you want to see more of this, go look up Mr. Hobotech, Professor Hobotech, and he'll take you through all of this thing.